Good day grade 5. Welcome to our science class. I am teacher Joey, your virtual teacher for today. Today class, we will travel to another lesson in science. I know and I am sure that you are all excited for another fun-filled learning activities for today. So let us now begin. But wait class, before we start our discussion, try to find a nice and comfortable place inside your home where you can focus with your lesson. I want you to prepare yourself as well as your materials necessary for your study. Kindly bring out your pen and paper so that you could jot down some important notes needed for your learning. Always remember class that having knowledge is having a power. For today's topic, we are going to discuss about weather disturbances. Last meeting, we discussed about soil erosion, its causes, and its effects on the living things and the environment. As a quick review, Soil erosion is the process that wears away surface materials and moves them from one location to another. We have the causes of soil erosion. We have the wind, gravity, water, glaciers, deforestation, activities of people, overgrazing of animals, and many more. Weather can affect you every day. Usually, you can still go about your business regardless of the weather. If it's raining, you can still go to the school. But some weather conditions like typhoons, thunderstorm, or tornadoes prevent you from going about your normal routine. Severe weather possess danger to people and animals. So in this video lesson, it will help you to characterize weather disturbances in the Philippines and describe their effects of weather disturbances on daily life. Recall what happened when you saw a flash of lightning from a distance. Subsequently, you heard thunder. The wind blows, then it suddenly rains hard. That was an experience of just one weather disturbances. In the Philippines, we usually experience different weather disturbances because we are surrounded by bodies of water. Our nearness to the Pacific Ocean, which lies on the eastern side of our country, is the significant contributor to weather disturbances in our country. With that, our country is mostly visited by tropical cyclones. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, lagi tayong dinadaanan ng mga kalamidad. And according to scientists, it is estimated that there are about 2,000 thunderstorms that occur every hour all over the world. And our country stands out for having the greatest number of typhoons every year. So what is weather disturbances? A temperature difference between the air and the surface creates a swirling mass of winds known as a weather disturbance is a term used to describe a change in atmospheric conditions or weather patterns. The types of weather disturbances are the following. We have the storms, thunderstorms, tornadoes, hurricanes, and tropical cyclone. Number one type is a storm. A storm is a violent disturbance in the atmosphere marked by sudden changes in air pressure and rapid air movements. Some storms may cover a huge area, whereas others cover only a small area. Number two types of weather disturbances is thunderstorms. It is a localized storm cloud that produces thunder and lightning. Ito na yung kulog at kidlat. It brings heavy rain showers as well as a gusty wind over a large area when the warm, moist air suddenly rises. Warm air then condenses, causes the formation of a huge cumulonimbus clouds. Number three weather disturbances is tornadoes. A tornado is a whirling, funnel-shaped windstorm which often develops from a thunderstorm. 
when this low pressure area touches the ground, it acts like a giant vacuum cleaner. Winds begin to rotate rapidly around the low pressure area forming a tornado. So, ito na yung sinasabi nilang ipo-ipo. Next, number four is what you call hurricane. A tropical storm with sustained winds of at least 120 km per hour is what you call hurricane. Hurricanes considered the most violent storms on earth. So take note of that. Hurricanes have several names depending on the location where they are found. So when it is in the Atlantic Ocean, it is called hurricane. When it is in the Western Pacific Ocean, it called typhoons. But when in Indian Ocean, it is called cyclones. Number five, tropical cyclones. Form when warm air moves over the surface of the ocean, creating a massive amount of water vapor. As it rises, the water vapor is cooled. Clouds are formed when water vapor condenses. Heat is released into the atmosphere as it does. Tropical cyclones weaken as they reach land not because a mountain or a building blocks them, but because the loss of their source of heat, which is warm air from the ocean, reduces their wind speed. We have kinds of tropical cyclones. Number one is tropical depression or TD. A tropical cyclone with maximum sustained winds of up to 61 km per hour or less than 33 nautical miles per hour. A weak low pressure with a defi definite surface circulation most common in an equatorial region or the international convergence zone. Number two, two kinds of tropical cyclones is tropical storm, that is TS. A tropical cyclone with a maximum wind speed of 62 to, 6 to 88 km per hour or 34 to 47 knots. When a tropical depression intensifies, it becomes a tropical storm. Number three kinds of tropical cyclones is severe tropical storm or STS. A tropical cyclone with a maximum wind speed of 89 to 179 km, 117 km per hour or 48 to 63 knots. More organized and more circular. And then number four kinds of tropical cyclone is typhoon or ty a tropical cyclone with a maximum wind speed of 118 to 220 km per hour or 64 to 120 knots most of the time accompanied by heavy rains and strong winds and then the last one kinds of tropical cyclones is super typhoon or s TY, a tropical cyclone with a maximum wind speed exceeding 220 km per hour or more than 120 knots. The strongest tropical cyclone classification created in 2015 after devastation of the super typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan. Areas that are hit by this kind face a large amount of destruction. Let's discuss the eye of a typhoon. The center of a typhoon is called the eye, with winds that move towards the center in counterclockwise direction in the northern hemisphere. So the yung gitna ng Baguio class is the calmest part. It has only light winds and fair weather. But when they come onto land, the heavy rain, strong winds, and large waves can can damage life and properties. 
So class, what is this pag-asa all about? So the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or what you call the pag-asa closely observe any changes in the atmosphere. So sila yung yung agency kung saan sila yung nakatutok kung ano yung nangyayari sa atmosphere. The agency gives people regular updates on the weather condition, typhoon signals to warn people of the coming typhoon through their regular weather bulletins. Wind speed is expressed in kilometers per hour and is measured using an anemometer. This time, I will show you the range of the wind speeds given for each signal number of the typhoon entering in the Philippine area of responsibility or the PAR based on Pagasa. So, we have the public storm warning signal number 1 and it lead time or hours in 36 hours. The wind speed is 30 km 30 to 60 km per hour and the impact of the wind is that no damage to very light damage. Next is public storm warning signal number 2 24 hours lead time and then 61 to 120 km per hour ang wind and then the impact is light to moderate damage and then signal number 3 the lead time is 18 hours, darating na siya. Then 121 to 170 km per hour kanyang wind speed. And then the impact of the wind is moderate to heavy damage. PSWS number 4, ang lead time is 12 hours. Ang wind speed is 171 to 220 km per hour and the impact of the wind is heavy to very heavy damage. And then the last one, PSWS number 5, lead time hours is 12 and then the wind speed is more than 220 km per hour and the impacts of the wind is very heavy to widespread damage. So these are the effects of weather disturbances. Number one, destructive forces of typhoon can have extensive impact on both human and animals' life. So andyan na yung mamamatay yung mga tao, masusugatan sila, mawawala sila during typhoons, or kaya magkukosyon ng kanilang pagkalunod. Number two is that there are likely to be shortage in food and water supplies. Number three, flooding can cause houses to completely destroyed so the communities are displayed from their homes. So maraming mga families ang mawawalan ng tirahan. Number four effect is that flooding may cause their properties to be swept away and farms to lose all of their crops to the winds and heavy rain. Number five is that extensive flooding may also cause the people to catch waterborne diseases that may eventually lead to death. Number six, there could be a cut in the electricity supply since fallen may have destroyed the power lines. Number seven, people experience lack of access to good medical care and medical supplies. Number eight, as roads and bridges collapse and destroyed, people would have limited access to major roads and cities. Number nine, Due to loss of possession and housing, some people might suffer from stress. Number 10. People who might be stranded due to flooding may suffer from trauma. Number 11. People may lose their jobs if they work in an industry that has been badly affected. Number 12. When crops are damaged, people would have no food and source of income. Number 13. People need money for the repairs of any damage to their homes. Number 14. In case of business, establishment destroyed operations will be closed. So the owners and the workers would have no earnings for the buildings or houses 
with insurance when claims are made premiums tend to rise number 15 agricultural crops and livestock may be severely damaged as they are washed away by flood waters number 16 dams may get full due to huge amount of water collected so there is a need to release water from them which may cause flooding in low-lying areas number 17 government building offices roads bridges and infrastructures like mrt lrt railways might be destroyed number 18 Branches of trees might have fallen on electric power lines, so there would be lack of electricity. Restoration of such infrastructures would have taken some time and entails expenses. So this time, let us now enrich what you have understood in our lesson for today. Get your pen and paper with you. Read each item carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer.